It was the same way. This is the philosophy of the law. Eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. Beautiful law. But laws have a tendency to change characters of people over a period of time. Any law, every law. I come from a color conscious country, South Africa. Everything is based on color. The South African government in the apartheid policy, they graded us into blacks, coloreds, blacks, coloreds, Indians and whites. And that part for 300 years almost. White man, colored man, Indian man and African man. Then they divided the black further. First is white and black. Everyone who is a European is white. Everyone who is not a European is black. No matter how white you look. Where do you come from? You come from Lebanon? If you are a Muslim, you are black. If you come from Lebanon, you are a Christian, you are white. If you come from Syria, no matter how white you look. Whiter than many English people, some Syrians look. You come from Syria, you are a Christian, you are white. If you are a Muslim, you are black. You come from Cyprus. You are a Greek, you are white. No matter how dark you are. The Turk with blonde hair and blue eyes, he is black. <laughs> well, it's, well, look, this is the last laugh you are going to have because that system is now officially abolished in the country. But I am just giving you history now. This is up to yesterday. This was so. Now, once you have such a law, your mind is working on basis of color. I have had hundreds of whites, Jews and Christians coming to my home. And I enjoy feeding people. Our hospitality, our food, our bhajas and samosas, they lap it up. The white man, the white woman, they eat like mad. I said, in English terminology, I said, they hog it. And when they part, they thank me profusely. The white people are good. They thank you profusely. You know, we enjoyed everything. The chat as well as the food. But subsequently, when they meet me in the street, they say, good morning, Mr. Dida. I say, good morning. I say, how's the wife? I say, she's very fine. How's the family? It's very good. But no white man has invited me to his house for a cup of tea yet. <laughs> so I'm asking the guys, I said, don't you people know anything, such a thing as reciprocation? Huh? You uncultured, barbaric people, you don't know reciprocation? No, no, you know. You know reciprocation. Then how is it that you eat my food, you enjoy my food, but you don't call me for a cup of tea at your house? Why? I know the reason why. That color consciousness. If he invites me and my family, and I go to the elite, we are all separated into races. The white man living in his area, the Indian in his area, the colored in his area, and the African in his reserves. So if he invites me, and I go with my family, with our, you know, our type of dressing, Pakistani, or Hindustani Muslims, the way we dress, long pants for the ladies, and nice downy covering the body and all that, long dress, and I go and knock at the door, I find number 10 Downing Street there, and I go and knock at the door, and the gentleman or the lady of the house, oh, she opens the door and recognizes, oh, Mr. D, Dad, come in, come in, come in, we are so happy you visiting us. And we get into the house. People were watching. The other whites were watching, somebody watering the garden, somebody doing some hoeing in the garden. They were watching, so where is this coolie going with his family? Hey, what is this guy doing around here? And look at that, Mrs. Smith, the way she smiles at this coolie, <laughs> you know. What's going on? And we go inside, maybe a cup of tea, and something little more than a cup of tea, some biscuits and things like that. And a half an hour goes, an hour goes, and tongues begin to wag. They want to know what's going on, what is Mrs. Smith doing with this coolie family? And if any relations of Mrs. Smith or Mr. Smith comes into the house, this Mr. Smith must go, must go out of his way to explain our presence there. It won't be like one English people to another, say, look, this is Mrs. Mr. Brown and Mrs. Brown. No, no, no. You must say, look, this is Mr. Didat, and you know, we went to his house, and you know his hospitality, he fed us with wonderful fruit, and this guy, he must now, actually, he's apologizing for my presence, my family's presence there. He knows that. So at the back of the mind, the color is coming in. So he eats my food, but he never gives me a cup of tea. Not that he doesn't know reciprocation, sociability, he knows all that. But that's only between white and white. 
not between brown and white difference so laws have a tendency to change the characters of people hitlerite germany and land of goethe and beethoven a very cultured nation a christian nation they incinerated 6 million jews some say it's a fib i said even 600 is bad enough on racial grounds you want to kill people because they are jews or they are indians or whatever i say unforgivable ah if they commit murder you can hang him okay the gas chamber okay he's a rapist chop off his head i said okay whether jew or christian or muslim or anybody but you kill a man because he's a jew he didn't choose himself to be a jew he was born into the world a jew in the home of a jew he had no voluntary choices and look i'll go and be born in the home of a jew he didn't decide that it's just a matter of accident that he happens to be a jew and you kill him for that 600 and six unforgivable on the basis of race but they say six million is a less except six million you start wondering how can such a cultured nation as the germans the land of the goethe and beethoven do such a horrible do such a horrible crime that's a very easy if you are programmed that way over a period these jews these are parasites they are christ killers they kill our god and it has been happening for a thousand years in europe in russia in poland in france in britain every easter the christian goes on the rampage he says these are christ killers they kill our god so they kill their men they rape their women and burn their homes and they fled where do they go to to arab lands and what does the arab say ahlan wa sahlan wallah that's his that's his nature that's his culture meaning family and play just think that you are a member of the family and be at ease make yourself feel at home thousand years this has been going on no problem there was no problem between the jew and the muslim no problem it's a different subject but i must just end with the sentence that the first time any trouble took place real trouble between the jew and the arab was when the arabs heard that the british government thinks with favor of the establishment of a Jewish state in Palestine. Ah, so what is this now? This is my country. For the first time, the Arab realizes that this is my country and this man here, you know, he wants to give my country away to somebody else. So he starts protesting, but he is not organized, he is not educated, so he makes a bad job of it. And he lost it. But between the Jew and the Muslim, no problem. In Spain, the Muslims ruled Spain for 800 years. The golden age of the Jew, ask any Jew, your golden age, the highest that you have reached in civilization and culture, when, they say, under the Muslims in Spain. The golden age of the Muslim was the golden age of the Jew. When we were kicked out, they were kicked out. When the Muslims were kicked out of Spain, the Inquisition, the Jews were kicked out and they came to Britain, they went to France and other places but our suffering was their suffering our honor and dignity was their honor and dignity that is how we live religiously there was no problem no Jew ever killed a Muslim saying kill him because he's a Muslim no Muslim ever killed a Jew because he's a Jew individually things could have happened brothers do kill brothers Cain killed Abel it happens all the time. But as a race, rise against the Jews, persecution of the Jews, never. Problem starts with 1918, the Belfort Declaration. However, we want a solution today. I am saying in all humility that the only system, being the way of life, that can bring these three warring factions, though we are not at war with the sword and the gun with the Christians, but there is a battle on battle royal for the hearts and souls of mankind the Christians are making tremendous efforts to convert the Muslim world there are at the present moment 35,000 crusaders raising the dust in Africa there are 6,000 crusaders in Indonesia so far they have converted 15 million Indonesians into Christianity and by the turn of the century they want to make Christ Indonesia a Christian nation they have converted more Pakistanis into Christianity since independence